шестое июня, пятнадцать часов. Добрый день, дядя, уважаемые коллеги и гости. Позвольте заседание диссертационного совета по защите диссертации по юридическому совещанию ученой степени кандидатов в академических наук по специальности действительно Иванки Аргентины на тему речевые акты, реализованные с использованием непопулярного слова «нет» в русской повседневной речи. By the orders in Petersburg State University of the 8th of April 2020, number 2743-1, I, Elena Ivanen, Doctor of Philological Sciences, Professor, acting head of the Russian Language Department for Humanities and Natural Sciences of St. Petersburg University, was appointed chairman of this dissertation council. Members of the decision council have been appointed by the same order. Let me introduce them. Under uh, order St. Petersburg University, the 23rd of March, 2020, number 2304-1, our session is held in remote access mode, which includes my colleagues, members of the council. So let me introduce them. Maria Dmitrievna Vayekova, Doctor of Pedagogical Sciences, Associate Professor, Professor of the Department of Russian Language of St. Petersburg University, Maria Dmitrievna. Can you see and hear us? Yes, I can. Uh, the so it's recording on as it is. Vasilova Galina Mikhailovna, Doctor of Philological Sciences, Professor, Professor of the Department of Intercultural Communication of the Russian State Pedagogical University, named after her son. Galina Mikhailovna, can you see and hear us? Yes, I can see and hear you very well. Thank you. Isers Oksana Sergeyevna, Doctor of Philological Sciences, Professor. Dean of the Faculty of Pedology and the Media Communications of Omsk State University, named after Dostoevsky. Good afternoon, Oksana Sergeyevna. Can you see and hear us? Yes, all is well. Thank you. Council member Boris Justinovich Norman, Doctor of Philological Sciences Professor, Professor of the Department of Theoretical and Slavic Linguistics of Belarusian State University, Belarus, is absent, unfortunately for a valid reason, but he submitted his review and it shall be presented. And our degree applicant, Tsui Lili, can you see and hear as well? Uh, yes, I can see and hear you well. Thank you. Also, here is the academic advisor, the degree applicant, Bogdanova Beklarena Televitna, Doctor of Philological Sciences, Professor, Professor of the Department of Russian Languages in Petersburg University. Natalia Viktorovna, can you see and hear? I can see and hear you well. Thank you. Everything is uh, well. So all the members of the dissertation council as a degree applicant are, are online. We can all see and hear each other. We can start our work. Dear colleagues, since our session has been held in remote access mode under the orders of Petersburg University, I invite all the participants to watch the procedure. And in case there's a technical failure, they stop seeing or hearing someone, please, or you, you disappear yourself, please inform me immediately and I shall call a technical break until such issues are eliminated. We already have such an experience. Uh, in case the connection with me is lost, I ask Maria Dmitrievna Vayekova, who is next on the list, uh, to take over, uh, announce a technical break, and if the connection with me is not restored, to uh, lead the, the meeting. Maria Dmitrievna, do you agree? Yes, of course. Dear council members, do you have objections? Uh, to this arrangement, no, uh, no objections. Let us continue to improve the quality of communication. Uh, dear colleagues, please switch your, keep your microphones switched off, but remember to switch them on then you're given the floor. Let me also inform you that our session is being recorded and broadcast online at the Petersburg University website. The speeches are being simultaneously translated from Russian into English or from English into Russian, which is probably not irrelevant in our case. The applicant's webpage currently displays an email address to which during the session, all the listeners of uh, the session of the decision council can uh, send their opinions and questions to the uh, degree applicant online related to her thesis and the ongoing scientific discussion of her report. These questions shall be forwarded to me by our technical support department and I shall present them during the discussion. 
questions should be related to the uh, applicant's uh, report, contents of the thesis, and should include the name, uh, position, and uh, place of employment of the author. Questions that are not related to the scientific discussion, discussion of the thesis, its contents, and uh, assessment of the thesis itself should not be presented. Under the order of awarding academic degrees, uh, degree of candidate of sciences at St. Petersburg University, approved by the local regulations of St. Petersburg University here and after the order. A session of the dissertation council is considered competent if at least two thirds of the approved members are present, but not less than four persons. Our dissertation council consists of five members, four are present, all in the remote access mode, all members of the decision council and the degree applicant or the visual contact has been established, thus we have the quorum. I instruct the curator of today's uh, the, uh, session, uh, officer of the department for dissertation council support, Sezona Vekitinovich-Slav, to draw up the attendance list, in which all the uh, present members of the dissertation council shall be recorded, as well as their working mode, in this case remote. Let me set forth the following procedure of today's session of the dissertation council with total duration of no more than two hours. And uh, so I have to read these 14 items. First, chairman summary report on documents submitted uh, by the degree applicant and their compliance with the applicable regulations. Answers to possible questions approximately five minutes. A report of the degree applicant uh, covering the key points of her study approximately 15 minutes. Third, questions to the applicant strictly on her report, no more than two minutes for each question. Four, answers of the applicant, no more than five minutes for all questions. Next, speeches of all members of the decision council in turn with their assessment of the thesis and presentation of the applicant with summary of their positions, questions and suggestions to the applicant Approximately 10 minutes for each speaker. Six, speech of the chairman with his assessment. Same 10 minutes. Final answers of the applicant to questions asked. No more than five minutes. Uh, presentation by the chairman of questions to the applicant, if any, sent uh, in, during the scientific discussion uh, online uh, at St. Petersburg University website. Answers of the applicant, no more than two for each question. Speech of the academic advisor of the applicant, no more than three minutes. 11, discussion by the members of the decision council before the open uh, individual voting uh, for the duration of each sound shall be muted, approximately five minutes. 12, open individual vote. Voices shall be counted by the chairman and results shall be recorded in the minute of the meeting. Next, making decision on awarding or not awarding the academic degree to the applicant and 14 closing remarks of the degree applicant, no more than two minutes. Dear colleagues, do you have any questions or objections to this procedure? Uh, please uh, say yes or no. Maria Dmitrievna, uh, or oh, yeah, I have no objections. Galina Mikhailovna, no objections. Oksana Sergeyevna. No objections. Thus, uh, if we have no objections, let us proceed, start the procedure. And please make sure that your mobile phones are off. Uh, so we uh, are not distracted. Thank you for the, uh, uh, thank you for your cooperation. Let us start our session. The floor is given to the academic advisor to leave then, philological sciences, the language of St. Petersburg University. It's, it's, uh, so the this is presented ahead of schedule and everything else she will uh, describe herself 
Thank you for introducing Zuleri, Natalia Vitana. You'll be given the floor again uh, later. And I have to uh, disclose, make some announcements. The thesis by Zuleri for the degree of candidate of pedagogical sciences, academic specialization 10.0201, Russian language, uh, on the theme speech acts realizes in the non particular word net in Russian everyday speech was submitted for defense by the order of academic secretary on the 8th of April 2020, order number 2744. So he wrote her thesis at St. Petersburg University under the guidance of Doctor of Philological Sciences Professor of the Department of Russian Language at St. Petersburg University, Natalia Viktorina Bogdanova Beglavian. Number of publications which set out the main scientific results of the thesis, according to the enclosed list, is nine. In peer reviewed scientific journals from the list approved by the Ministry of Education of Russian Federation for publications in journals indexed in scientometric databases, Web of Science and Scopus, no publication. The degree applicant submitted to the academic secretary of, of the Petersburg University a full package of documents uh, to accept the thesis for consideration depends. All the documents comply with Article 12 of Section 3 of the order. All the submitted documents, according to the information I received from the curator, comply with the requirements and are stored at the uh, degree applicant registration file. Copies are available from the officer of the Station Council Activity Support Department curator today's session, Ekaterina Vishalna Sezonova, who is currently online. <clears throat> and before I give the floor to the degree applicant, uh, I have to ask, do distinguished council members have any general questions to the degree applicant? And is it necessary to disclose and review the entire list of documents submitted by the degree applicant? Maria Dmitrievna, I uh, reviewed all the works of Lily, so I don't uh, see any need for this. Thank you, Maria Dmitrievna. Uh, Galina Mikhailovna, no, I don't have any questions. Uh, no need to... Uh, Review, discuss the documents. Excellent. Again, I have no questions. Thank you, colleagues. We, there are no questions. So let's give the floor to Tsulili uh, uh, to describe the key uh, points of her research. Uh, Tsulili, you have exactly 15 minutes. Uh, let me start the presentation. Uh, can uh, you all see the presentation? Maria Medrina? Can you see the presentation? Aksana Sergeyevna, can you see the presentation? Uh, please say yes or no. Yes, uh, all is well. And uh, Maria uh, Galina Mikhailovna can also say, okay, uh, then we may start. Thank you. Dear Chairman of the Dissertation Council, dear members of the Council, dear colleagues and guests, my work is dedicated to the analysis of speech acts implemented with the use of non-particular Russian word net in everyday speech. All uses of the word net as a non-particular are classified as non-particular. The aim of my work is to provide a multi-aspect description of speech acts implemented using the non-particular word net in Russian everyday speech. To achieve this goal, numerous traditional tasks have been set, which have been divided into two stages. The preparatory stage, as you can see on the screen, uh, for uh, it's over, a literature overview dedicated to speech acts, of oral everyday speech, description of the word net in Russian grammar books, uh, creation of a user approach uh, for specific study, and the ASHA research stage is identifying uh, uh, specific features of uh, fun uh, functioning of WebNet in the COPS material, comparing the results with uh, data of uh, grammar textbooks and dictionaries. This uh, qualitative comparison uh, is uh, different communicative situations, analysis of speech acts, 
we are implemented in uh, non particular with net classification of these speech acts in the uh, from the point of listener and speaker analysis of speech act of disagreement with the user non particular with net with the position of theory of politeness conversational and social linguistic analysis of speech act of a refusal with the use of non particular word net the research material is a user subcop of context with the word net and netto based on the russian everyday speech corpus one speech day uh, which includes 702 contexts with the word net netto from one speech day 89 micro episodes recorded from 24 informants and their communicate their communicates more than 26 hours of record uh, recorded and more than 257000 word uses in this table you can see a fragment of information of format metadata you can see that we have information about gender age education uh, degree qualifications profession or type of activity and in the end you may see uh, indication of the sound time in minutes and seconds and the volume of the fragment in words this data is available for each informant the composition of informants was balanced by gender and age and as a result the speech of six men and six women six informants since younger informants of younger age and six older informants have been uh, studied a total of 24 people the analysis showed that not all the codified types of meanings of the word net are found in real use and even what corresponds to the established characteristic of the word in fact allows one to see a lot of uh, peculiarities that cannot be put within the framework of a dictionary article or a grammar rule analysis of the, uh, the oral speech material allows one to clarify their lexicographic description of the word net this is the first provision to be submitted for defense the second preposition in oral everyday speech net is twice as likely to act as a non-particular word than as a particle uh, varieties of non-particular net uh, used in speech are arranged in the following order. Most, 55% of the total number of occurrences in the meaning uh, of sentences, 36% in the predicate verb in, an, in impersonal sentences, and 9% in the equivalent uh, phrases and whole sentences with negation. All the identified types of non-particular uses of the word net are easily integrated into various collocations or grammatical constructions and can be described schematically. No, yes, no, why not? Uh, uh, no, or simply net. Uh, here are some examples. First meaning the non-particular word no so is a predicate in an impersonal sentence the first example uh how are you there are uh, no 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 there's no, no nothing's on no that's genitive in the second example uh there's uh, no generated nothing and the second meaning the word sentence in a non-separable structure or non-separable sentence which is more common in negative answers to questions uh, uh the answer is what's your impressions the answer is no and the third meaning the equivalent of a word phrase a whole sentence with a negative uh, meaning will you or won't you uh, yes or no a second example shows a colloquial version of the literary construction where there is no uh, conjunction simply no the first case uh, uh, the next proposition is that most frequent pairs of speech acts implemented with the word yet belong to the category of representatives and evaluatives. Question, disagreement. Constitutive, constitutive. Statement, disagreement. Question, constitutive. Constitutive, question.
Here are some more examples of realization of speech acts. The first type of speech act is representative. Где-то еще моя ручка здесь была. Нету? It's a question. Вот. Или я у биологов спрошу. Вот. А потом уже решить, выкапывать ее или нет. Uh, in this example is a statement. The second type is evaluative. Uh, вы не в курсе? Нет. It's here is it's agreement. Uh, можешь забрать все уже? Uh, тетрадка в кузе была. This is uh, несогласие. And uh, is, today, is, uh, today I will uh, here. That is refusal. The fourth proposition, the word net as an equivalent substitute for a word, phrase, a whole sentence with a negative, often expressed in a question, statement, or order. The listener's, the listener's reaction to the speech act can also be different. And the last proposition, in Russian everyday speech, social relationship of community of participants can influence the expression of the speech act of refusal implemented with the word net. The features of dialogue depend on the social distance and social uh, significance of participants. The relationship between participants may vary depending on different degrees of symmetry or symmetry of their social roles. But in oral speech, people often change their social roles and those parameters vary depending on specific on a specific situation. And in theoretical terms, my study contributes to the description of speech acts to, and in the creation of a kind of a lexicographic portrait of the word niet in everyday oral communi spoken communication, as well as in the description of trends in the development of the modern Russian language. In practical terms, the results of their study can serve as material for works on the study of uh, oral speech in native and non-native languages can be used in the course of lectures on general linguistics in various special courses on the analysis of discourse as well as in the practice of teaching a practical course of Russian as to a foreign audience and in practice of translation. Thank you for your attention. Uh, Lili, uh, uh, finished ahead of time. So now we may ask uh, questions regarding the applicant's report, uh, which may cl clarify some propositions which remain unclear. And we can hear answers, no more than two minutes for each question. Dear colleagues, do you have, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, ask Ma uh, Maria Dmitrievna. Uh, no, I don't have any questions. Everything is clear. Oksana Sergeyevna, do you have any questions? No, I don't have any questions. Galina Mikhailovna, no, I don't have any questions. I have no questions either. So let us proceed to speeches of the Dissertation Council with their reviews and assessment of the study and of the applicants report with uh, questions and suggestions that uh, shall be commented by the degree applicant. I suggest that Tsui Lili will answer all the questions together in the end. Is that okay with everybody? Yes. Uh, so then um, let's uh, do it like this. Uh, and now first, uh, do we have any external reviews? Uh, have we received any external reviews? I think no. No, there are no external reviews. Uh, no, it, we received no external reviews, so the floor is given to members of the Decision Council. And since all reviews have been published at the university website for review, I suggest Council members should summarize the key points, questions, and comments to the degree applicant if there are no objections. No objections. Okay, no objections. Well, thank you. Then uh, I uh, would like to ask Maria Dmitrievna to start. 
Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, you can. Then I will omit the part devoted to the description of the key points of the thesis because uh, we have already heard that from Lily herself. Uh, what I would like to say is uh, something good, not only comments, not only critical remarks. So let, what I would like to say, the qualitative data obtained by Lily is interesting. For example, on page 95, she presents a scheme under each of a half of all word uses. So uh, the net functions as a sentence word. Uh, 36 is negative uh, uh, predicate and only 9% of uh, uh, negative uh, response equivalent of a speech formula. So this re relation uh, will remain the same uh, if the database is increased and uh, representatives of other social groups are included. Qualification of non-particular uses of word net based on empirical analysis of example uh, given, for example, on page 77 or 101, this classification is net plus genitive. Question, uh, answer, why not uh, predicate or net, uh, predicate net. Uh, this uh, novel observations uh, to create the theoretical significance of the work, which in my opinion lies in the study of uh, specific features of functional word net, the material of uh, natural spontaneous speech. These observations allow to include data obtained by the author in uh, lectures on morphology, pragmatics, and social linguistics. The results by Lili Tsu are also important for teaching Russian as a foreign language because the uh, degree of negation studied in the work is not always easily perceived by speakers of other languages, which uh, gives practical significance to the results of the study. Where we live it so carefully studied in uh, ten, 10 publications, only two written uh, she has co-authored, which manifests her independence. The work has been uh, significant, scientific significance as any novel, Resolve some objections at certain points. My main claim, my opinion, should be for poorly justified uh, sphere of uh, her research. The term non-particular users does not allow the reader to understand in details exactly which structures she analyzed because the object of description is, uh, is see in introduction page five. The non-particular non includes all the uses of uh, word net as no near non particular in the way it doesn't give that doesn't contain definition non particular uses. This results in an unfavorable situation where one uh, concept is defined through another. So it will be interesting uh, on what basis predicative and post positive uses are uh, joined together. It's also necessary to define the particular usage because in several authoritative uh, dictionaries, propositive proper uses uh, are described as particular. For example, this is in the small academic dictionary, all the three uses except for, uh, so, so clarifying this issue uh, will enable how the uh, initial statistics was obtained. Also on page 93, there is a diagram of statistics. The author mentions challenges uh, which she encountered in interpreting the examples, but does not give the final definition. Maybe uh, she can provide one during the defense session. Or also the author does not define the word everyday speech. First, this expression has is not a term. For example, it is not clear where uh, such genres as toast, speech, congratulations, etc. could be applied as everyday speech, which go beyond everyday speech. And at the same time, uh, belong to informal speech. So it will be interesting to hear the author's uh, explanation on this. If everyday speech has any, what are the limits of everyday speech? And so what are the limits of this? Uh, what, 
On pages 100 and 203, the author uh, says, when the word net as a, a, a subject predicate and a word sentence, the word itself is present in the speech act, not of the speaker, but of the listener. When the word net acts as an equivalent or replaces a word, phrase, or whole sentence with negation or uh, opposition, the word net is used only in the speech act of the speaker. On page 108, the uh, author gives a number of uh, examples. Нет, я смотрел заднее зеркало мужик. Там стоит себе машина. So what makes the author think that in this or in any similar example, the word net is present in the speech act of the listener, not of the listener? In my uh, opinion, the situation is exactly the opposite. We're talking about the speech of the speaker. And uh, in the case of equivalent, the speech of the listener. Uh, at that, uh, saying, uh, answering net, the listener assumes the role of the speaker. So the whole situation requires clarification as well as statistics. My comments uh, result from interest, the thesis by Tsuli Li, speech acts uh, realized using the non-particular word net in Russian everyday speech correspond to the basic requirements set by the order of the 1st of September 2016, number 6821-1, on awarding academic degrees at St. Petersburg State University. And the degree applicant Tsu Li Li deserves to be awarded the degree of candidate of philological sciences, specialization 10201 Russian language. Article 11 of the above mentioned order has not been violated by the degree applicant. That's all. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Maria Dmitrievna. Uh, so let us give the floor to Vasilyeva Galina Mikhailovna. Galina Mikhailovna, please present your review. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. That's very well. Uh, I would like very briefly to say that the thesis has undoubtedly uh, relevance. This uh, said all that in my review, novelty and theoretical significance. Uh, all, all the only thing I wanted to uh, uh, add is the practical significance because it is certainly significant. And first of all, uh, this significant, this practical significant is connected with the possibility to use the material when teaching different courses and textbooks for Russian students. But also I wanted to add, so teaching Russian as a foreign language, I think this work has special significance for teaching Russian to foreign cultures, highly contextual cultures, such as the Chinese culture. In these cultures, or the speech act of explicit disagreement is practically absent and because of that forms of its verbalization for representatives of such cultures become a challenge and for foreign students it's very important to understand how exactly the word yet is used in everyday speech of speakers of russian and that not every day it uh, lies within the framework of negative reaction this is very, this material is very important, very interesting for teaching Russian as a foreign language and for courses in intercultural communication. And also I wanted to emphasize among these general characteristics, what impressed me, I was impressed by, uh, by the, uh, the nature of uh, studied material, the amount of material and clear systematization uh, show or credibility at credibility validity of the results so the first two chapters look fundamental and manifest a careful attentive attitude of the author to the academic tradition of study of the theory of speech acts I was very interested in chapter three of the thesis, where the author compares uses, usage of 
word net recorded in academic grammar books and the uh, dictionaries and in the corpse material. Uh, here, the author defines the main codified variants of functioning of non particular net uh, recorded in dictionaries and uh, used in uh, oral speech, uh, which I shall not I shall not list them now. The most interesting uh, is our two variants of uh, non uh, functioning of non particular net recorded by dictionaries as uh, uh, not as, 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 as uh, or absence of something such uh, asymmetry of usage of non particular net in the normative dictionaries and practice seems to be especially relevant for the modern lexicographic practice. Uh, interesting material is presented in chapter four, where the author looks at function of the word net from the uh, from the theory of politeness and social cultural aspect. So in general, the thesis as a, as a whole is a complete uh, and the uh, objective set by the author. All the tasks uh, she has been completed have been completed by the author. So the uh, author conducted a multi aspect description of speech act with the use of non particular word net in Russian everyday speech. I, uh, while reading the thesis, I got some that I, I wanted the author to clarify some points or discuss some points. Let me read them. First, in chapter three of the thesis, uh, analyzing grammar and dictionaries, the author identifies five main classification functions of the word net. Comparing when the material of the corpus uh, she identifies two variants uh, registered by dictionaries, but not uh, used in uh, contemporary everyday speech. This result seems to be uh, uh, very significant. Does the author think it's possible to speak about the uh, narrowing and semantic types of non-particular net in more contemporary everyday speech? How can she explain this trend? And the last question, should uh, this uh, principal changes in the traditional lexicography be considered or only in the differential type of dictionaries in the genre of speech lexicography, which this study is connected. Second, after setting herself the goal to uh, compare the use of word net in dictionaries and in oral speech, the author uses a highly distinguished academic dictionaries, which is completely justified. But uh, for comparing with contemporary oral speech, it's, uh, it makes sense to use uh, contemporary dictionaries. The lexicographic interpretation of the word net in the big universal dictionary, the Russian by Markovkin and Bogachev Lukotsky, Lutskoy, uh, is uh, very different from uh, its lexicography in the big academic dictionary and reflects some modern trends. First, the authors consider in its two separate articles with two different uh, versions of net acting as a particle, but as a uh, word of state. Second, the authors uh, explain in detail each use uh, more narrow speech constructions with the word net. It seems that using uh, recent dictionaries for the analysis will help to compare co codified and speech norm of uses using the word net. The questions are explained by the interest and the desire uh, to uh, learn more about and so these are points for discussion and they by no means affect the overall high assessment of the thesis by two Lily which uh, is an independent and a complete study. Uh, the said above uh, allows me to conclude that the thesis by Tzula Lee on the theme speech as realized using the non-particular word net in the Russian everyday speech corresponds to the basic requirements set by the order of the 1st of September 2016, uh, number 6821-1, uh, on awarding academic degrees at St. Petersburg University. And 
the degree applicant truly Lee deserves to be awarded the degree of candidate of technological sciences specialization 10.0201 Russian language. Article 11 of the above mentioned order has not been violated by the degree applicant. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, Galina Mikhailovna. Now the floor is given to uh, Oksana Segina Isers. Welcome. Please turn the microphone on. Is, can you hear me now? It seems to me that this work uh, is part of the relevant sphere of uh, researchers in Petersburg University under the guidance of Natalia Vitana Bagdanova Declarian because the studies of more contemporary discourse practices allow not only to understand how we speak here and now, but also to transfer this knowledge to students, including uh, uh, contemporary usage and to broader pub, uh, population of foreigners who want to know how Russians speak in reality and not how it is this, uh, written, described in uh, dictionaries and uh, grammar textbooks. So speaking of relevance, it's hard to add something because the uh, sphere of uh, communica communicative pragmatics is highly uh, relevant for the current state of development of Russian studies. The study uh, seems to be very rele highly relevant. And in my opinion, it's very important uh, in, in the sense of watching the real speech practices, the material which Militsu uses is, uh, so to say, uh, is not always attractive from the point of simplicity of uh, collection and analysis. So here we should compliment the author for the her brave decision as a, as a foreign a doctoral, a doctoral student, as a foreigner who uh, took up such a, a, a difficult task. Uh, among the results which I'd like to mention uh, is the use of specific schemes, which uh, the content the content can be different, but the uh, the system itself is a new step in description of the grammar of speech, which is often described now. And here I wouldn't say, uh, I would say a certain contribution to uh, theoretical, uh, to the theory of grammar of speech, uh, Lili Tsu managed to uh, achieve under the guidance of her academic advisor. Also, I'd like to mention, uh, dialogue analysis and social linguistic parameters of communication, at least uh, what the author did in section 4.6, where the author studies speech acts of negation with the help of NET and analyzes them uh, in the light of social relations, symmetrical and asymmetrical. It uh, seems, it looks very interesting. And in this case, the studies on the, in the beginning of a long road because the use of this method and the obtained material and the results will enable the author to write many interesting articles of this and publish such articles. Also, I'd like to mention that uh, practically well justified and methodologically justified is the social linguistic survey conducted by the author uh, to identify the speaker preferences in some speech acts. Any experiment always uh, is, has a creative nature which cannot uh, be borrowed from somebody. So here again, uh, the author had to display, uh, to be creative, 
uh, she interviewed almost 100 respondents uh, who had to answer a question T uh, new style. I don't know who invented maybe the academic the degree applicant or the academic advisor. This finding seems very interesting because obtaining such interest, such material through a survey is always problematic because uh, we always look at social desirability, taking part in an, uh, in a, an experiment. But as it looks here, here uh, it was done in a very interesting way. What else I would like to mention? Uh, in particular, I will not comment on the amount of material on annexes. And I think this shows uh, how valid the conclusions are, considering the amount of work performed. Uh, tests uh, also testing the results. Uh, of course, uh, one can achieve certain results, uh, but getting feedback and adjust, uh, adjustment always increases verification. And uh, in the end, uh, maybe some questions or considerations. And uh, I will try to read them. <clears throat> My first question is always important. Uh, it's related to material selection. Uh, the huge co corpus, one speech day, includes considerable material. And somehow the degree applicant managed to select uh, practically over one fifth whose speech days uh, became the corpus of the thesis, which method did she use for this? Uh, and if uh, are you satisfied by the corpus that you have analyzed or in the course of your study, you found that some materials are missing and they are not representative enough. So this is my first question. The second question, of course, is connected with our interest uh, the study of foreign language abroad, first of all in China, and it will be interesting for us to learn how relevant for Russian, uh, for Chinese uh, scientists studying Russian, of course, uh, looking at your own language and taking an outside look, maybe an external look may be different. So what is is a background uh, obvious for the speaker. So may you have to make a certain uh, effort to identify the background against which the language functions. So from the point of a foreign researcher, it will be very, and Li, Su, Sui Lili has done that. So it will be very interesting how relevant for uh, Chinese scientists studying uh, Russian. Uh, it's, next I have, two questions which are logical to ask if, if an author who's a foreigner how the material will be, will be used in teaching Russian as a foreign language. And I would like to understand if there are any maybe small fragments of discussion uh, with Chinese textbooks of the Russian language and how your results can be used in future textbooks, uh, course books. And uh, so how realistic is that, is to use it for teaching Russian. A uh, separate comment, I think, and I hope to get an answer, is the form ne tu, which is sometimes given in brackets and sometimes discussed in the thesis. On the one hand, Intuition tells us that we uh, uh, use it in set expressions. Uh, how does it mark from the point of social parameters of the speaker? And in your opinion, do you think it should be used, it's worth to use this particle, non-particular use of NIT as a particle? in teaching Russian as a foreign language. And 
uh, also in to uh, to continue think these observations which are relevant for foreigners can be very can be uh, used as uh, to uh, in teaching russian to speakers of russian because what seems every day to as ordinary to us we fail to know this and for the experts this is important knowledge and in conclusion let me say that all these questions have uh, our points for discussion and the work by Lili Tsui is an independent complete study uh, in which the author has set and achieved multi-aspect description of speech acts uh, using the non-particular word net in Russian everyday speech and of course in my opinion the uh, thesis on the themes uh, speech as realizes in the non-particular word net in Russian everyday speech corresponds to the basic requirements set by the order on awarding academic degrees at St. Petersburg State University and the author, the degree applicant, deserves to be awarded the degree of candidate of philological sciences. Uh, Shall uh, 10.0201 Russian language. Thank you. Uh, and uh, yes, uh, Article 11 of the above mentioned order has not been violated by the degree applicant. Thank you very much, Oksana Sergeyevna. I have to give the floor to Boris Yustinovich Norman, who unfortunately was unable uh, to attend. Uh, but uh, let me uh, let me summarize the key points of his review. Uh, novelty of the uh, thesis by Tsui Lili uh, in the uh, subject of the study, uh, common word net studied uh, in, uh, in uh, recording and this enables uh, to uh, uh, communicative and social linguistic functions of this word and to compare it uh, with the uh, dictionaries and uh, the textbooks. The second aspect is the analysis uh, of there's a there's a uh, the study of speech lexicography enables to understand the world uh, picture of and the real uh, communicative approaches. And in this case, uh, so, so significance has hierarchy of types of speech acts uh, realized with the word net. Uh, the uh, so relevance of conclusions, a lingua didactic aspect. They can be used for teaching. First of all, as, as paying attention to real uh, pragmatic elements of the Russian sphere. Boris Yustinovich also mentions that the thesis has many provisions which have scientific significance for contemporary Russian studies, uh, social, linguistic, and psycho diagnostic aspects. Uh, important qualitative differences in the use of net, the different informants, etc., etc. Undoubtedly, the significance of this corpus, a one speech day, according to Boris Yustinovich, since Tsui Lili observes that negation is used not only to express disagreement or refusal, but in a number of other uh, non-typical speech acts uh, and though the overall positive the overall uh, assessment is positive Boris Istinovich uh, believes that some propositions are not justified enough and he uh, asked for some clarifications the first most significant uh, comment is about the, the definition of the study object Uh, since there is no clear definition of non-particular particle net and uh, so the definition uh, from the opposite seems 
that some uh, interpretations of the word net uh, are questionable. And because of that, he's careful uh, about the presented statistical, like 66% of users, non particular word, and only 37% of cases it is used as a particle. So, uh, in rela relation with this, he has a theoretical question what is the status? What is non particular net? Uh, is uh, the, do the results prove that in or spoken language, as uh, the whole system of word classes should be reconstructed. The second critical comment relates to the basis of scientific literature on which the author relies. Maybe the author shouldn't pay so much attention to the theory of speech acts, uh, which has been uh, described in detail. And on his behalf, he mentions many works uh, which, in his opinion, deserve attention, but uh, have not been uh, are not mentioned by the author. And finally, the Boris Istinevich uh, has some doubts about uh, natural speech activity conducted uh, within the program one speech day, because no uh, informant, no respondent, uh, who's been watched. 24 hours a day round the clock uh, can remain 100% natural but that's his personal opinion so this cannot be so he has to be uh, he is very uh, careful so speaking of the positive and getting to the end of the review uh, Boris Ustinovich says that the list of uh, studied sources over three hundred titles and uh, he uh, also comments on the English text and he believes that the text will be interesting for a, or, um, for a number of uh, foreign experts uh, uh, studying Russian and where's the last page thus uh, the comments of Boris Ustinovich uh, do not uh, prevent him from giving a positive opinion that the thesis by Lili Tsu on the theme speech as realizes in the non particular word net in Russian everyday speech correspond to the basic requirements established by the order of the 1st of September 2016, order number 6821 1, uh, on the order of awarding academic degrees at St. Petersburg. State University and the degree applicant, uh, Lily Tsu, deserves to be awarded the degree of candidate of philological sciences, specialization 10.0201, Russian language, Article 11 of the above mentioned order has not been violated by the group. And uh, so I will, uh, now I have to thank Boris Ustinovich for his review, for his feedback, and the last item. Uh, and uh, I will take the floor myself and uh, so my task, I have the easiest task. I can uh, support the positive things, but on my behalf, uh, I will put my own, uh, have my own, uh, deserves m many positive uh, uh, evaluation covering different aspects is very Credible, and not in every thesis we come across that uh, in every case quoting is uh, gives his uh, own conclusion or which the author of the thesis is going to use which he considers relevant and uh, or maybe how he uh, in uh, she enlarges the uh, logic of this uh, chapters is uh, perfect opinions and sums it up and makes a decision uh, 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 regarding her opinion. Of course, Tuli covers very well the importance of the sub corpus one speech day, day up to a very detailed after the very detailed information about individual respondents. But it seems to me that there are some 
points uh, which are very interesting but unfortunately they became uh, they are not visible enough but the very fact that the author has uh, politeness how they are observed or violated in SpaceX the use of web net uh, is uh, the principle of cooperation preserved how in these speech acts with the uh, so it seems very interesting for me the use of non-particular word net in the practical in chapters three and four of course the significant material is presented here uh, the author uses grammar textbook and dictionaries and uh, one speech day corpus but i think uh, when the author uh, I, mentions all the meanings in the Russian grammar and other sources. Uh, to me, the question was still open. Uh, what exactly is absent here and there in the corpus one speech day uh, of what is uh, present and what is absent from grammar textbook? This question seemed very interesting to me, but uh, it but though, of course, a specific speech usage is much more interesting than various uh, vocabulary fixations, which are uh, available to anybody. And the material presented, uh, so we would, wouldn't be able to access this material if it were not for the thesis. And the use of non-particular word net uh, identifies contextual context collocations uh, where the word is used uh, was, uh, of speech ellipsis where this word is a constructual uh, amplification of certain semantic vectors semantic of negation semantics of absence uh, contributed by some uh, semantic supports this is very interesting but of course, the material is complex and the very ideology and even the form of recording to me, uh, and I'm not an expert on this and I don't work with such recordings, was interesting because I'm not easy for me to understand. So I can imagine how hard the degree applicant had to work uh, so the, uh, she had performed a great analytical work, generalizing work, theoretical work. At that, I'd like to focus on some points which seem maybe illogical or maybe inaccurate to me. So first, it seemed to me that and clarifying the purpose of the work uh, calls for some clarification because the multi-aspect description of a speech acts in Russian release speech is not the goal, it's, uh, but rather an approach. Approach, And uh, using this approach, what did the author wanted to show? Specific features of uh, spoken speech. Otherwise, what is the purpose of this? So I missed that. Conclusions uh, in chapters one and two. Uh, are, do not satisfy the traditional standard of uh, generalizing conclusions. For example, chapter one, uh, oral speech as the object of linguistic study uh, has a paragraph uh, which describes the contents of the chapter, definition of spontaneous speech, and uh, focuses on the importance of subcorpus. Even in the introduction, the uh, importance and aspects of study of oral speech is described in more detail. Uh, the uh, titles of individual chapters, for example, the title of chapter three uh, calls the object of study, non-particular word net in uh, everyday oral speech is claimed as functional semantic characteristics, which uh, allows us to suggest what the chapter is going to be, speech acts, uh, realized with the help of non-particular word net, and that uh, does not allow us to figure out 
what exactly the author is going to write about. Uh, also, uh, the uh, this, uh, characteristic in uh, paragraph three to five, pages 8893, data characteristics of situations given by Russian grammar. Uh, there is no indication on the purpose. So, oh, well, uh, the author just lists situ uh, the usage situations, but does not comment on coincidence uh, or lack of coincidence. Also, I'd like to answer an interesting question um, uh, um, because of the status of net as particle and non-particle. Don't you think that some semantic trace of parti uh, particularity remains is, is uh, on the show in net? In this context, the function of it net replaces a uh, phrase of uh, a combination of a negative particle uh, with the form of the verb. Uh, and so, uh, so what do you think? Or maybe this is included because uh, is in, in the combination the verb. So you uh, assess it differently. And also, I have one more question. So Lily mentions uh, is an important feature, uh, the ability to form grammaticalized structures and reduce form. Did Ponyal или нет, будет ждать или нет, though Ponyal net is different from some other phrases because the degree of idiomacy is doubtful, seems, looks doubtful to me because, let me say, uh, Вкусный или нет? Две или нет? Утром или нет? So practically any word uh, we can put in this. Uh, so is, can we talk about collocations? Are these set expressions or is this a set uh, grammatical structure uh, into which any words can be? So here, this was not justified. It didn't get, so this, Questions and comments do not reduce the overall positive impression made by the work and do not deny the obvious merits of the author uh, who has achieved the desired results. Uh, it's obvious that the work makes a significant contribution to the theory of speech acts and demonstrates how the general tendencies observed in specific, specific features of the use of word net the thesis by Tsui Lili uh, on the theme speech acts realized using the non particular word net in Russian everyday speech corresponds to the basic requirements set by the order. The 1st of September 2016, number 6821 on the order of awarding academic degrees at St. Petersburg State University. And the degree applicant Tsui Lili deserves to be awarded the degree of candidate of philological sciences, specialization 10.0201, Russian language. Article 11 of the above mentioned order has not been violated by the author. So we heard all the reviews. Now, according to the procedure, we have to give the floor to the degree applicant and let her answer all the questions asked by the reviewers. So Lily, you have the floor. Thank you. Dear members of the discussion council, Elena Ivanovna, Karina Mikhailovna, Maria Dmitrina, Oksana Sergeyevna, and Boris Yustinovich. I thank you all for your positive feedback about my work. And I find your questions and comments very important and interesting. And I will try to answer some of them. Elena Ivanovna asked whether it is uh, possible to conclude from my work that in live oral speech, the entire system of lexical grammatical classes is a, a way to demonstrate a uh, um, certain of oral speech. What is the meaning of this description? The purpose of my work is a multi-aspect description of speech acts realized using the non-particular word net in Russian everyday speech. The multi-aspect nature of the description lies in the fact that the material is analyzed from the position of linguistic, social linguistic, and conversational types of analysis. I wanted to describe 
speech acts with the word net in order to try to identify their types, patterns, and features of use in the oral speech. Garcia Sustinovich asks if it is, uh, can we make a conclusion that in everyday speech uh, uh, it shall be reconstructed in oral speech, it's, uh, it's a study of the corpus material, not only my work, uh, but it's uh, recorded in dictionaries and grammar. It's grammar. So here we often come across new non-conventional, uh, new words uh, and new possibilities for a combination of so here I think that any construction should be tested upon everyday speech of native speakers of a language and uh, conduct comprehensive linguistic analysis of these two forms of existence of the language and the system of lexicographic classes of words can also be restructured if necessary not restructure uh, the existing system, but create a new uh, system of world classes for everyday speech. And uh, in some points, it will coincide with the existing, or, and that is normal. If you compare speech, uh, uh, have independent organization, so uh, we may suggest uh, existence of uh, linguistics of language. And further, Maria Dmitrievna and Boris Ustinovich ask uh, about the differentiation non particular and particular with net studied in my work. Indeed, there are difficulties in differentiating between the particular and non particular uh, net in the research material. The analysis showed that it is not always possible to clearly distinguish these types of uses and in dictionaries and grammar, as it turned out, do not have unity in this regard. To get a more or less adequate functional and semantic characteristic of the word in Russian oral everyday speech, we had to introduce some formal criteria. First, the word sentence recognized net in negative answers to question only with appropriate intonation or in presence of an explicit phrasal border, such as question mark or exclamation mark, syntagmic pause or absence of any pause, it sounds to consider net as a particle. In a number of dictionaries, including mass and uh, the, such uses are interpreted as negative particle. In our thesis, the interpretation proposed by Bas is accepted. Net is considered as an ineligible sentence word sentence. Second, additional difficulties in the cause of contextual analysis were caused by the abundance of various types of hesitation elements that are so characteristic of spontaneous speech. Most of the time, such uses were considered as particular. Taking into account all these assumptions and reservation, the analysis of the corpus material has probably resulted in the more or less relevant functional and semantic characteristics of the non-particular uh, word net in Russian everyday speech. This question of Elena Ivanovna is close. Does it seem to me that certain semantic plume of particularity uh, persists when using the word net in context uh, in phrases such as on pressure или нет. After all, this the functional word is replaced by a combination of negative particle with the form of the word or the verb. On pressure или не pressure. I think no. In this example, according to the dictionary data and the classification used in the thesis, the word net serves an equivalent to a word, phrase, or a whole sentence with, a, uh, with negation, that is, is uniquely non-particular. 
And one more question by Yelena Ivanovna. What does extensive research mean? So issues related to speech acts and what issues exactly? What are the advantages of a negative speech act classification presented in chapter 2.4? In what direction? Based on the results of this analysis, the recitation suggests moving. When I, when I talk about extensive research, I mean that it is very difficult to build a clear classification of speech acts based on the material of oral speech. Here, quote from Dr. Tatiana Yurivna, uh, quote, each researcher offers his own classification based on his opinion and research goals. The construction of a universal and consistent classification of speech acts, which would serve as the basis for their correct linguistic and pragmatic interpretation, can be considered uh, one of the Hilbert problems of modern linguistics. Therefore, in this second chapter, I listed a number of classifications of speech acts, and I chose to research the classification of speech acts by Tatiana Yurina Sherstinova, with additional support for the classification by Irina Nikolaevna Borisova. According to my research, the word NET plays an active role in the implementation of speech acts. For example, valuatives, suppositives, regulatives, and others are uh, negative speech acts. Therefore, it was interesting to see how scientists describe these speech acts and to investigate the role of word NET in such situations. Therefore, in section 2.3, uh, to show how the word NET is implemented in negative speech acts, I chose two frequent and typical speech acts, speech act of disagreement and speech act of refusal, and especially made a detailed description of the speech act of disagreement implemented using the word NET from the standpoint of a uh, uh, theory of politeness in uh, speech of refusal implemented is in the word net in everyday Russian speech, taking into account the social relations of speakers in section six of chapter four. Oksana Sergeyevna asked, really in Chinese Russian studies and more broadly, there are no works on the function of the word net and there are not even a word on Russian everyday speech and speech acts. In the Chinese linguistics, there are works on both everyday speech and speech acts, but mainly in uh, Chinese studies and English studies. As for uh, Russian studies in China, researchers often review foreign literature, describe, summarize, and cite the results of Russian studies in order to uh, introduce them to the Chinese scientists and all those interested in the Russian language, Russian culture, and so on, and etc. Most Chinese studies are conducted from the perspective and in the purpose of teaching Russian uh, and uh, or foreign languages, or from the point of view of comparison with the Chinese language, sometimes with the Chinese culture. One may say that in comparison with the research of Russian literary language, oral colloquial speech in Chinese Russian studies is still is very little studied. And uh, there are some phrases uh, in grammar textbooks as, um, as for the studies of uh, in oral everyday speech are still absent. Oksana Sergeyevna also asked, how do I imagine uh, the use of the results of my work in, in teaching Russian to foreign students? How exactly I'm going to use this data and at what stage of teaching Russian as a foreign language this could be possible and really useful. For the Russian studies in Russia, data obtained in my work 
will allow us to create a lexicographic portrait of the word net and can be used for specialists in oral everyday speech when analyzing the Russian units in various aspects and when describing any particular speech act of everyday Russian speech and further research for any other purpose. For uh, the Chinese Russian studies, not only these data are important, but also the introduction of new methods for studying Russian spoken everyday speech. And of course, for providing linguists with a good sound corpus of uh, one speech day. How the teaching of Russian language in China is divided into four parts, listening, speaking, reading, and writing. I think with the first, in the first and second years, it is necessary to teach the reference language, which means teaching vocabulary and grammar, but some simple common elements of oral discourse that have almost no lexical meaning or are fully related to grammar, but are very important and unavoidable when speaking Russian, can be introduced into reading materials and exercises already uh, in the first and second years. Next, it is possible to introduce more complex uh, frequent elements in the listening materials, primarily for listening and understanding in the third and fourth years, so that students can listen and learn to understand the real, natural, everyday Russian speech. Teachers should also explain more to students the functions of these elements and help them to navigate the real Russian spoken language. Here's just a place for our words net and nieto, which Oksana Sergeyevna mentioned in her review. Along with the literary net in oral speech, the colloquial form nieto occurs only in the meaning of predicate. Uh, subject. In all calculations, the data for net and net in my work are combined. The share of net in the research material is 11%. The social linguistic analysis of the material has not yet revealed any noticeable correlations within the uses of net and netu and the characteristics of the speaker. Calculations have shown that such usage prevails in the speech of younger men and older women, uh, which doesn't give grounds to drop any conclusions uh, of a social linguistic nature. In general, such conventional elements are somewhat uh, occur more often in the speech of men and in forms of the old age group, although the difference here is not too noticeable. The word neto has not yet appeared on the list of the most used textbooks for Chinese students in China. I mean, eight text main course books from the first to fourth year. I specially asked my friends, classmates, studying the Russian language and realized that the word Nyetu, uh, know only those who listen to materials uh, Russian and read additional materials on oral speech in Russian. Those who live among the speakers of Russian, they often listen to the Russian speech and speak Russian. Or teachers, sometimes even foreign teachers, often tell them about the word, but this form in the Russian Chinese dictionary, the Chinese teachers of Russian explain this form as is written in the dictionary. Neto is colloquial form of the word net, it means absence. Uh, often in classes, they demonstrate fragments of films the word neto is used. If I teach Russian, I will tell my students about the word neto in the first month immediately after introducing the letter. Yeah. For example, the Russian word net expresses not only negation, but also agreement. And and you can also ask a question using the word net, rather than just using question intonation. You can also tell your students about many 
constructions, collocations that express other meanings, such as нет проблем, нет выхода, нет сил. This will help the students to improve their command of the Russian language and make it easier for them to communicate with the speakers of Russian. In the master's and postgraduate studies, you can also use the address, the speech corpus. Teach students and postgraduate students good methods of research of the Russian oral everyday speech. Halida Mikhailovna asks, I think it is not possible to talk about the fundamental narrowing of the functional semantic types of non-particular word in the modern everyday speech. How can I explain this trend? Should this fundamental change be taken into account in traditional lexicography or only in the different types of dictionaries? That is in the genre of speech lexicography that my research is related to. Yes, I think it is possible to talk about a fundamental narrowing of functional and semantic types of non-particular words in the modern everyday speech. This tendency is a natural process of language development. Russian, like other languages used by the people, is a, is a living system. And it's not surprising that something in this system dies or changes. Some meanings or words uh, become obsolete. New ones appear, other words take on new meanings. But for native speakers of Russian, all these words are familiar from the very beginning of language acquisition, even uh, though they are extremely rare. For example, the expressions <coughs> нет, нет, да, uh, which means uh, occasionally, sometimes нет, нет, да и. Uh, they are used in uh, dictionaries, but not found in the one speech day corpus. The lexicographic approach ensures recording not only of new words that add to the lexicon of modern native speaker, but also of new meanings of old words, stylistic shifts, and emergence of lexical units of new connotations, the changes in uh, characteristics of any others. The live oral, live oral speech is rich and diverse Intentive attitude to its units and their behavior can soften the usually uh, negative in relation to many pure speech phenomena and see behind them not only negligence of our of, of speaking, but also the language evolution. Oksana Sergeyevna Isers, a specialist in the field of communicative linguistics, wrote this as an epigraph to one of her books. The, the language, we must be aware, is changing and nothing can be done about it. We can only fix and wonder. And now about the term everyday speech. So Maria Dmitrievna asked. The, indeed, there are difficulties with this term. Researchers even say that the concept of everyday speech is still outside the terminological tradition. This was uh, uh, mentioned in February at the 13th Shmelov readings in Moscow. Section 1.2 of my thesis describes the terms spoken speech, spontaneous oral speech, spontaneous speech, and everyday speech. One of the questions discussed at the 13th Shmelov readings was formulated as followed. Everyday speech uh, it doesn't mean colloquial speech, uh, question mark. This uh, indicates the concept that really speech is not sufficiently defined. I am, of course, aware that everyday speech exists not only in the colloquial variety, and not all everyday speech is colloquial, but in a broad sense, accepted in the words. These terms is uh, used as synonyms. However, this applies only to the analyzed context. For example, I think uh, that in the one speech day corpse, all toasts, speeches and greetings are, are, belong to everyday speech. The most general and fair term seems to be 
everyday speech. That is a speech that a native speaker uses during the day in various situations, colloquial, public, scientific, etc. As my academic advisor, Natalia Vitna suggests, when it comes to everyday speech, the scale of lexicographic description should uh, is comparable to what we have today in relation to language. Given the complexity of analysis of the material of oral spontaneous speech, this solution seems to be most acceptable. About the choice of dictionaries, Galina Mikhailovna supposes that connecting to the analysis of dictionaries of most recent years will allow simultaneous comparison of the codified and oral norms of the use of the word net. The analysis of the corpus material in my work was preceded by a review of the meanings of the lexium net based on dictionaries of the Russian language. I used uh, dictionaries as uh, Russian grammar and uh, revealed both similarities and differences in the basic part of the semantic structure of the studied word. Using these dictionaries is explained by the fact that the time of their creation, the difference of 50 years, allows you to track changes in the values functions of the word need, compare its characteristics in different lexicographic sources over the time. I think that these dictionaries have already stood the test of time and readers for a long time, uh, codifications in these dictionaries are already familiar to uh, almost all speakers and recognize they're quite uh, uh, authoritative for general dictionary review. As for the great universal dictionary of the Russian language, um, uh, uh, suggested by Galina Mikhailovna, this is also a good and uh, authoritative dictionary it uh, shows parameters of description of the word. This is about 17 orthoepic, accentological, grammatical, semantic, paradigmatic, uh, functional, stylistic, emotional, uh, phraseological, country studies, uh, and some others. In the future, uh, I should read it carefully and make a separate comparison of its codification with the academic dictionaries then we may try to make a synchronous comparison as suggested by Galina Mikhailovna. Thank you, Galina Mikhailovna, for this idea. Boris Justinovich also asked about non-natural speech in the uh, One Speech Day corpus, which became a material for my study. I dare say that absolutely natural speech that is suitable for all-round linguistic research simply does not exist. To study spontaneous speech, linguists have developed a number of methods. The most common ones are experimental, an oral interview and included observation. First of all, it is necessary to find out what criteria can be used to evaluate uh, naturalness of spontaneous speech according to Yelena Andreina Zemskaya. The function of colloquial speech is a, is a sphere of informal, unprepared personal communication. So it seems appropriate to select as a criteria for evaluation of naturalness of spontaneous speech those that most linguists call the main features of spoken speech, namely, is uh, spontaneity and unpreparedness. Naturalness of speech is understood by the creators of the corpus in two aspects. First, nothing should affect features of the speaker's speech behavior, the repertoire duration of his usual speech days. Second, the informal uh, implements his speech behavior in the standard situations. Uh, the corpus captures everyday speech of native speakers of the Russian language in its most natural form. The method of the 24 recording provides 
almost complete freedom of the speaker from the uh, 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 tasks such as reading, uh, description, story on a given topic, which inevitably complicate his task and provide output through very rather spontaneous but still experimental speech. As for the experiment, it can be constructed based on what exactly phenomena in speech are of interest to the researcher. But in both cases, the experiment for the speaker is a kind of stressful situation. In this situation, his speech may be much less natural than in normal life. An oral interview, especially if it is conducted on site, at home or at workplace, allows to establish a psychological contact with the interviewee, which in some cases allows to create a more comfortable environment for the speaker and presumably to make the speech more natural. Recording speech on a hidden uh, dictaphone is ethical and acceptable. And of all other ways uh, of recording everyday communication, the most painless method for the speaker to get natural, spontaneous speech is enabled observation. That is the method of uh, a dictaphone on the neck. The speaker lives an ordinary life and speaks in a natural, familiar manner that brings us closer to the natural speech. <laughs> and there's one more question by Oksana Sergeyevna. According to what principle, out of 130 informants of the One Speech Day Corpus, which became the source of material for the study, we selected 24 whose speech days made up the user sub -corp for the, of, of the material. What was the method, the selection? The method, as, uh, so, uh, as, uh, method is automatically receiving and by hand check uh, is, is, which is impossible to, on, of the entire corpus material. That is why in this work, we decided to conduct a selection the word of using myth, uh, using a small number of informants uh, that would allow us to get a general impression of the material as, uh, as uh, it's described in the work. Uh, we used two parameters, gender and age informants represented a different age and professional groups. For subcops, we selected six, six persons in each group. There are two age groups, younger and older, taking into account also such characteristics of the subjects as main type of activity and level of education that would lead to significant expansion of the boundaries of the study. To this, one can add the level of speech competence their social status and some other parameters that are balanced in the uh, One Speech Day corpus. This can also be considered a perspective of the chosen direction of analysis of the corpus material. There are many more specific questions in the reviews, but it is hardly necessary to answer them in detail now. It would take a very long time. I accept all these questions and comments by the distinguished members of the Decision Council with gratitude, and I will try to take them into account in my future work. Thank you again from the bottom of my heart. Uh, thank you to Lily. Uh, now I have to ask you, dear colleagues, are you satisfied with the two Lily's answers to your questions and comments. Maria Dmitrievna, yes, I'm quite satisfied, thank you. Uh, Galina Mikhailovna, what about you? I'm fully satisfied, thank you. Oksana Sergeyevna, yes, I'm also fully satisfied. And, and I think Boris Yustinovich would be 
happy he heard answers and I can uh, inform him that uh, he got uh, answers to his questions. I'm also satisfied with the answers. Now we have to ask if there are any external, if any questions were received online. Did we receive any, have we received any questions? So we are asking, who are we, who do are we asking? Yekaterina Vecheslavovna. Uh, no questions. We receive no questions. Then we may move to the next point, speech of the uh, academic advisor, Natalia Viktorovna Bogdanova Biglarian. Thank you, Yelena Ivanovna. Lili Tsui became my student, uh, one of my doctoral students. Uh, her earlier life, she studies, she conducted in China where she completed a bachelor's course in one, at one university and master's course at another university. And it's important that she came to Russia uh, to, for her, to take a doctoral course and she selected me as her academic advisor. She selected me uh, and she was not given. And the very fact that Lily came to Russia especially to meet me uh, is, uh, is very rewarding. So she was ready to study what I am interested in. So she uh, was ready to tackle material complex uh, for even for native speaker Russian, spontaneous spoken language. And here we, uh, our interests joined and our knowledge, everyday speech, is within the scope of my scientific uh, uh, interests and speech acts uh, were the subject of uh, Tsui Lili's master's degree. So we uh, were uh, useful to each other and hopefully today's defense has already demonstrated how successful our cooperation was. Uh, without exaggeration, I can say that during these three years, Tsui Lili worked hard uh, uh, six uh, presentations at various conferences, not only in St. Petersburg, but in Moscow and in Vladimir, and 10 publications, including three publications and journals recommended by the Ministry of Education. Uh, this is an impressive result. Another presentation uh, Lily was going to do in March at our traditional conference but this did not happen uh, uh, because of the virus situation, but uh, the uh, report has been prepared. So working on her thesis, uh, Lily gained excellent momentum and she's not going to stop. Uh, yesterday, we discussed with her another article in the Journal of St. Petersburg University and I think it is going to be accepted. So she continues her work. Lily uh, is uh, uh, really, uh, she was a member of uh, my student seminar where she worked together with others and complied with all my requirements, knowing uh, this is good for her language practice and uh, for getting better command of the corpus material on which our seminar is working and for getting uh, skills of scientific discussion, of asking questions and answering questions, our seminar became good school for Lily. And I know that uh, practically all the members, Lisa, are watching uh, this uh, session. Uh, Lily got uh, one respect, not only from other students, but from teachers. Many times over these years, I heard positive opinions, uh, which made me very proud for my students. And I know that Lily has great plans for her future professional life. And I think no matter what she does, after take, completing this doctoral course, uh, the experience she gained in Russia will help her in any Field. I wish her from my heart success in her uh, life and professional activity. Thank you. Thank you, Natalia Viktorovna. We are also very happy that such great 
prospects are open to our applicant since we are working in the remote access mode and that is not easy i have to ask if members of the dissertation council and others present other listeners and the degree applicant any unanswered questions uh, connected with uh, working in remote access mode. If anyone has any questions or needs clarification, please ask them now. Galina Mikhailovna, do you have any questions? Oksana Sergeyevna, no. Maria Dmitrievna, no questions. And Boris Stinovich cannot answer. Then let me ask the following question. We can take a break to discuss the results of today's defense if we need it. So for that, we should switch off the sound off. Do we need such a break to discuss the results of today's defense? I don't know. Uh, everything is uh, clear to me. So you have nothing to Galina Mikhailovna? No, I don't need. Uh, I Everything is clear. Oksana Sergeyevna, do you need? Uh, my uh, opinion is ready and I also, my opinion is also ready. So we don't have to discuss anything to discuss. So let's proceed to voting. I'm going to ask each council member, Maria Dmitrievna, what is your decision? I have to, I vote for awarding the degree to Tsui Hili. Uh, thank you, Marina Galina Mikhailovna. What is uh, your opinion? I vote for awarding the degree without any doubt. Thank you. Oksana Sergeyevna, what is your opinion? I also vote uh, for awarding the degree. Thank you. And since uh, we only have four members, so I also vote for awarding the degree. And then there is no need to count votes. Uh, we all voted for awarding the degree. So we are almost done with our agenda. So uh, we voted and and dear colleagues and guests, let me inform you that out of four dissertation council members, four voted for awarding the degree, no one voted against, and no one abstained. So the decision to award to Tulili the academic degree of candidate of philological sciences, spe specialization 10.0201 Russian language, has been made. Since our session was held in the remote access mode, I have to ask once again, do council members and others present, or maybe the degree applicant or other listeners questions regarding the procedure of today's session? Maria Dmitrievna, comments or questions uh, regarding the procedure? No, everything uh, was perfect. Kalina Kalana was very well organized and I have no, no comments or questions. I don't have any comments either. I don't have any comments either. So we uh, may give the floor now to uh, the degree applicant, to Lili, uh, for your close, please give your closing remarks. First of all, I would like to thank sincerely uh, the Chairman of the Dissertation Council, Yelena Ivanovna Siliverstova, and the Secretary Sazonovic uh, Slavna uh, for their assistance in preparation for the defense. Also, I'd like to thank uh, uh, everyone who has read my work, members of my Dissertation Council, Yelena Ivanovna, uh, Boris Ustinovich Norman, Galina Mikhailovna Vasilova, Maria Dmitrievna Vayekova, and Oksana Sergeyevna Isurs, as well as members of the expert group, Maria Dmitrievna Vayekovna and Victoria Barisovna Tatiana Yurina Shostinova. Thank you for your kind, interested, and objective uh, feedback, which enabled me to see drawbacks 
and to get a better understanding of the significance of my work, I shall certainly take into uh, all this into account in my future work and for uh, overall positive assessment of my thesis. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, everyone who assisted me in my work, uh, especially I would like to thank uh, to my academic advisor, Natalia Viktorovna Bogdanova Beglavian, for the interesting theme for her continuous help and attention at all stages of writing my thesis and all stages of my uh, studies. Uh, during the entire period of my doctoral studies, Natalia Viktorovna provided not only help and support in my scientific work, uh, but uh, influenced the key choices in my personal life. Thank you very much. I would like to thank uh, the members of the seminar of Natalia Viktorovna uh, on spontaneous speech, working with the spoken corpus. All members of the seminar helped me in my work uh, on the corpus. Without each, my study would not be possible. And uh, prospects of my work. Also, I'd like to thank uh, my parents, my elder sister, and all my friends and colleagues, and to everyone who supported me, and to those pres present virtually at the session and outside. And in conclusion, I'd like to thank the Russian Federation, St. Petersburg University, uh, for attention uh, to my scientific work and to the uh, for the opportunity uh, to present my thesis in such in this difficult period. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you to Lily. <clears throat> so well. Now we have the chance to congratulate the applicant. Thank you. We wish you lots of success in your uh, in your work. Uh, so you have a lot of work to do with Natalia Vikrana. Dear colleagues, at that, I declare our session closed. Let me thank you for your participation, for uh, dynamic, good dynamics, and please stop online broadcasting. Thank you very much.